In this presentation, I'm going to talk about tight junctions. What are tight junctions, what are they made of, and what are their functions in the context of epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are usually polarized, which means they have different sides and each side has different characteristics and different composition of lipids and proteins. So there is an apical side, the lateral sides, and the basal side. Tight junctions are going to be located on the lateral side of the epithelial cells, close to the apical side. Now let's talk about the functions of tight junction. Tight junctions have two functions. The first function we're going to talk about is to create a selective diffusion barrier. Now, what does it mean? Well, material can pass through the epithelial tissue from one side to the other in two pathways. The first one is transcellular pathway and the second is paracellular pathway. So transcellular pathway is when material pass through the cell itself, which means material must pass through the plasma membrane. This process can be passive, for example by diffusion, or active, for example by active transporters, which require energy. This pathway has little to do with tight junctions. The other pathway is the paracellular pathway, and this is where material, usually small materials such as water, electrolytes, or small molecules, pass between two cells. The paracellular pathway is regulated by tight junctions, which allow passage of some material and prevent the passage of other. So in a general sense, we can say that the tight junctions are like the security guard preventing the passage of unwanted material between cells. That's why we say the first function of the tight junctions to form a selective diffusion barrier. The second function of the tight junctions is to prevent certain membrane proteins from diffusing from the apical side of the cell to the basal side or lateral side of the cell. What does it mean? So for example, without getting into too much details for now, the intestinal epithelial cells absorb nutrients and various molecules. One of those molecules is glucose. The cell must take in glucose from the apical side and release it from the basal side. So for the cell to uptake glucose, it uses a transporter called sodium glucose symport, which will take glucose molecules alongside sodium ions. And for the cell to release the glucose from the basal side, it uses a transporter called glucose uniport, which transports glucose out of the cell. Now, why did I mention this process? For us to properly uptake glucose, we need this mechanism to work. And for it to work, it is very important that the symport will be located on the apical side and the uniport will be located on the basal or lateral side. This is not that simple because some proteins in the cell membrane can diffuse from side to side. For example, from the apical side to the lateral side and from the lateral side to the basal side. And in this case, we would want the transporters to remain where they are. For that to happen, we need some sort of border or some sort of barrier that can prevent the symport from diffusing from the basal side or lateral side to the apical side, and vice versa. Now, luckily, this barrier exists, and it's the tight junction. So again, the two main functions of tight junctions are A. To be a selective diffusion barrier, and B to prevent proteins from diffusing away from their designated side of the cell. So now let's talk about the proteins which are a part of the tight junction complex. Tight junctions are mostly made of proteins and I will talk about the three most important ones, which are occludin, claudin and gems. So first let's talk about occludin. Tight junctions are known as occluding junctions and occludin was the first protein to ever be identified within the tight junctions. So, the function of occludin is to participate in maintaining paracellular barrier, which is the barrier between cells, and the barrier between the apical side and the rest of the sides of the cell. Now, occludin is expressed in most of the tight junctions, although some types of epithelial cells do not express occludin and still manage to possess normal and fully functional tight junctions. Now, the second and more important proteins that we'll talk about today is the claudin. Claudin are a type of protein family, which essentially are the backbone of the tight junction. So altogether, in tight junctions, clothing functions are to A, form the barrier between the apical side and the rest of the sides, and B, to form the paracellular barrier between cells, but also to allow passage of materials by creating channels. These channels are called paracellular channels, and these channels are what allow some selected material to pass between cells. There are several types of clothings, and the amount and types of clothings vary from tissue to tissue. So for example, clodin-1 is expressed in most tissues and its function is to create a barrier against paracellular transport, especially in the skin. Clodin-2, on the other hand, is expressed in leaky epithelial tissue, including parts of the kidney tubules, in which its function is to act as a cation permeable pore to allow the passage of cations between cells. So to sum up, clodins are a very important protein family in tight junctions. Most of the function of the tight junctions can be attributed to the clodins. 
Also, the amount and types of clothing vary from one type of tissue to another. So the last type of protein I will talk about are the junctional adhesion molecules or GEMS. GEMS are members of the immunoglobulin superfamily. GEMS do not form tight junctions directly. Instead, they associate with the various types of clothings in order to upregulate or downregulate the clothings. Depends on the type of clothing and the type of tissue. I want to mention that GEMS have many more functions and there are various types of GEMS that participate in various physiological functions. However, I mention them now in the context of tight junctions only. So again, to sum up, the functions of the tight junctions are A, to create a selective diffusion barrier and B, to prevent the apical side proteins from diffusing to the lateral side or vice versa. And three of the most important proteins are occluding, clothing and GEMS. Occluding helps to maintain the functions Clothing are the backbone of the tight junctions, and one function of the gems is to upregulate or downregulate the clothings. In the next video, I'll talk about anchoring junctions.